Hey guys, it's Woody the Unexceptional Gamer, and this is Mail Monday, a weekly series that's not so much about the gameplay, but instead is about your questions and my answers to them. Uh, quick note, I usually grab this the longest game on my hard drive for this series, so they tend to be games where both teams had players of equal skill. Anyway, enjoy. Let's get started. I'm going to paraphrase this one so it reads smoothly. I'm a 14-year-old European student. Last year I didn't have a problem. My attendance was okay. But this year... I got more into games and friends and I started skipping school, at least once or twice a week. But last week, I skipped class all five days. When I do it, I make excuses to my mother that I'm not proud of. I stay at home, I play games, talk to friends. Exams are coming in the next two weeks and I have this feeling that I'm still not going to go. Any help or advice would be appreciated. Thank you. I have a friend, a guy I used to play ice hockey with, who married an alcoholic. And one of the things that was eye-opening to me, like one of her struggles in getting back on course, was how someday she would wake up and just decide not to go to work. Or um, she was a student, she was you know, an adult going to school at night. And some days, you know, it, it was hard for her to decide to go to school. It was just a big challenge for her. Whereas most people are just kind of on autopilot with regards to that stuff. Most people just wake up go to school, and don't really debate whether or not today is a day they're willing to endure something they don't like. Um, you know, it, I worked at Cisco for decades. Well, I actually worked there for like 13 years, but I had similar jobs for, uh, you know, two decades nearly. And, you know, I didn't love it, but I pretty much got up every day and just went to work, you know, as if I was on autopilot. And then... Uh, when YouTube happened and I started to see other people who lived a different lifestyle like FPS Russia and, you know, his pickup truck filled with watermelons and explosives that I talk about sometimes, I felt like an ant that had been working on his tunnel forever and suddenly realized like, oh my gosh, you know, I, I pop my head out of my little ant hole and say, whoa, you people get to do this? I didn't even know this was an option. I thought I had to sit here and dig all the time. And it looks like that's what's happened to you. And it is good for you and good for society if at some level, you know, you continue to operate kind of brain dead and just go to school, go to work, do your thing every single day, um, you know, whatever it takes to, to contribute to the GDP on a daily basis. That's, you know, that's of course what the man wants. But there's still something in it for you as well, right? Like, you, you can, if you just sit there and, and kind of only do what brings you short-term pleasure, then that's, that's not going to work out either. So, you're stuck in this weird position. Like, Woody, my eyes opened. And I've started to view all these things in life as optional, but that's not my path to success. And now, you know, it, <laughs> either... You put your head down like you did last year and stop considering things that are bad for you to be viable options. Or, you know, you do what happens to a lot of adults and realize like, all right, I, I get this. My head's out of the hole. I, I, I see that, you know, I'm not actually handcuffed to, to these decisions that I've made before. But I also recognize that they're good for me. I also recognize that, you know, if I go to work, if I go to school, if I, you know, do the things that everybody knows are, are good for me, then it's going to work out well. And I, I think that's where you are. You know, there's a good reason to go to school. It, <laughs> without an education, you're going to live a life of regret. That's the deal. You know, it, our world rewards smart people. And, um, uh, you, know, you need to be one of them. That's the thing. So uh, so go back to school, even if you're in school with a mind that understands that, uh, you know, <laughs> there's a world outside of school. I still want you to go in there and recognize that that world outside of school isn't going to be so sweet when, um, you know, your parents aren't carrying you. So there you have it. Go to school. <laughs> go to school, even with your eyes open. Recognize what school is doing for you. It, it really is making a better life. My mom is cheating. Hi, Woody. My problem is I found out my mom is cheating on my dad. I'm the only one in my family who knows this. I accidentally saw in a Facebook message from her to her friend information about her cheating. Ever since then, I've gotten more curious and found out more and more. I feel like I have to tell someone and it's a heavy weight on my shoulders, but I don't know what to do. 
I've considered confronting her or telling my dad, but I don't want to cause a divorce or tear apart the family. Any response would be greatly appreciated whether or not it's on Mail Monday. All right. First of all, my heart goes out to you, man. You don't say how old you are, but uh, I picture you to be somewhere between 14 and 18. And um, you shouldn't be stuck in the middle of this. Right? That just sucks. That's, that's not right. It is time to have a heart to heart with your mother. And, um, and in that heart to heart, you're going to tell her that, you know, you can't be expected to keep the secret. Let her know that it hurts you and that you found out and that it's weighing heavy on you. Uh, her response should not be, I don't want you to tell your father. You and I are going to shoulder this burden for the rest of your life and keep it a secret from your dad. Nope. Mom, you got busted. <laughs> You got you to gotta quit with the, the deceiving. You got to quit with the lying. You got to quit with the hiding. It's done. You know, it's, it's over. And the cat is out of the bag. And, and you can tell her that. You can say, look, you, know, you can't ask me to betray dad like this. You need to come clean with him. And, uh, and she probably will. That'll probably be the end of it. And, and you guys will move forward from there. If they break up, it's not your fault right? It, it, and it's not even necessarily her fault. You know, it, typically when, you know, there's some sort of unhappy marriage, you know, you don't pin it all on just one person. It's, uh, you know, is she not getting the love and attention that she needs from your father? I, she's the cheater. All right. I get that. But it's not appropriate for you to pick sides. You know, she, I assume has lots of redeeming qualities outside of this. So, um, yeah, you know, what's the next move on this thing? Talk to your mom, tell her that she needs to come clean and that she can't count on you for, you know, keeping her secret. That's, that's the deal. Um, hopefully your parents work this out, but it sucks that, um, that their relationship isn't going more smoothly. That's, that's the deal. And, uh, like I said, and I want to drive this home this isn't your fault. You know, whatever's going on in here, it is not the kid's fault that the parents are having a, you know, a hard time with their relationship. That's, that's how it is. This letter cracked me up. <laughs> I'm 16 and I'm from the UK. Recently, my parents have started to completely cock block me. I've been getting with this girl for a while now. Neither of us want a relationship as we're prone to cheat on our partners and don't feel like bothering to pretend that we're committed when we're not at all. It started when my dad gave us a lift home from a party. I sat in the back seat and got off with her. It wasn't just like a peck on the cheek. It was like tongues and biting, etc. We were both drunk, and I don't normally do that in front of my parents. Since then, whenever I invite any other girl, or whenever I invite her or any other girl around my parents, they'll always keep entering my room. Once my mom took the covers off my bed and said she needed to change them. <laughs> we weren't even doing anything. I need a free house to get the state of mind necessary to perform. <laughs> also, when I go to a girl's house, they won't give me lifts. So now I have to walk or lie about where I'm going. How can I get this to stop? Or at least get them to leave me alone when someone's around my house. I, <laughs> you know, I keep seeing this and I think, isn't he a cheeky lad? And I don't even know what cheeky lad exactly means, but God, it, he's got to be one, right? It, it, he's got a, a friends with benefit going on here. He, he's got, you know, multiple girlfriends and, and he's making out tongue kissing and biting them in the back seat while drunk in his parents' car. This guy, <laughs> you know, part of me wants to say, bad, bad kid. You know, the, the adult version of me. But there's a kid version of me that's like, oh my God, you are such a legend. So, uh, uh, you know, what do you do from here? I think in your parents' eyes, you need to be seen as more of an adult. That's just the deal. Um, you know, they're, they're not seeing you as a responsible person and therefore, you know, they're... <laughs> giving you putting you under the umbrella of their sense of responsibility that's that's what you see here and you think to yourself like oh my god you know maintaining parental trust is such a pain in the ass but like i've said in in other male mondays the parental trust is what gets you your freedom that's what you're asking for you're asking for a hand in getting places you're asking for a little freedom and trust but you also you know, want to take that trust and, and hook up with lots of different girls and you want to get drunk and kiss and bite them and things like that. 
which sounds like a good time, but dude, I'm old enough. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, so when you're around your parents, I need you to act more adult-like. Uh, you, you certainly can't be hooking up with girls in the back seat while they drive you around. You know, when you are in front of your parents, you need them to think of you as a mature person where everything is going to be, you know, handled. So, um, you know, and then once you do that and maintain it for a while, then you're going to be in much better shape. So, um, so there you have it. That was Mail Monday. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Okay, so if you liked the video, be sure to click on like. I always appreciate that. And if you're new around here, you can click subscribe in the top right and see the future stuff from me. Two vids you may have missed. On the left, new zombie news, eight new game modes exposed. And on the right, a little talk about why people hate Call of Duty. Have a good day.